each year and the rate of financial exploitation is extremely high with one in 20 older adults saying they've been mistreated. Uh, so Simone de Alba is in the newsroom now with the tips on how to prevent this kind of financial abuse. Yeah, Paul, thank you. Joining me today, I've got Michael Hackard with Hackard Law at Mather. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having okay, me. This is really, really interesting. Also startling some of the statistics we were seeing. Paul touched on it. Five million people, victims of elder abuse, one in nine seniors reporting this abuse, and also a lot of it underreported. Right. So what are you seeing? Is this shocking to you? Well, it... it Probably when I started, it was shocking to me, but not so shocking anymore, sure. as, as you indicated. Only one in 44 cases is really ever reported. Wow. And, uh, of course, a lot of the times, uh, elder financial abuse doesn't show up until after uh, the senior has passed away. Interesting. And then families are shocked. But, of course, they're also shocked when the uh, elder is alive and isolated and family members sometimes can't even get into the house or mm -hmm. uh, use a telephone to contact them. You really, I mean, these people are really preying on vulnerability here. I mean, these are vulnerable, vulnerable people. Absolutely. Yeah, they're the, they're, they are the targets of some bad people. Mm -hmm. I wanted to touch on, so you wrote The Wolf at the Door, Undue Influence and Elder Financial Abuse. Uh, in this book, you kind of detail ways to protect yourself and, and things that you can do to kind of empower. And so where do we begin in, in the scheme of this? Well, one uh, a great pay, uh, place to begin is transparency. Sure. You really should know what's going on with your parents or grandparents. And hopefully you can convince them, maybe through a family meeting, that it's important uh, that you do know what's going on with them financially. Yeah, and some red flags as well. Those are really important to keep an eye out for. They really are, and it, you can see it, uh, overuse of ATMs, mm -hmm. oh, uh, trans okay. un, uh, transfers of money, things missing from the house, them uh, being isolated by a caretaker or family member. There are a lot of those red flags that's good to look for. Yeah, and I like the, so the book really breaks it down, even in terms of giving you steps you can take to prevent something like this from happening. How important, obviously, is communication? So I'm thinking of my own grandparents here. So communicating with them, saying, hey, how are you doing? How are things going on? And then paying attention to what's going on in their world. Absolutely. Okay. Communication is it. it, it it's the best uh, preventative measure that you can have. Mm -hmm. And you know, we talked in the commercial break, you are seeing this all up and down the state of California, here in our region in Sacramento as well, but I mean, this is really a widespread issue. Yeah, uh, Adult Protective Services calls it the silent epidemic. Okay, I did want to touch on real quickly before we let you go, The Wolf at the Door, uh, some proceeds from this book, if people purchase it, they go where? They go to the Alzheimer's Foundation of America. I don't take anything. Yeah, uh, all proceeds go, and that's where I think it should go. All right, Michael Hacker, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you. All right, let's get over to you, Paul. Coming up in our